All right. Um, hi, everyone. We're the Amadi Group. Uh, we're going to be presenting our poster on synthetic aptamers for low-cost PLD1 inhibitors. Uh, my name is Anushka. I'm Drew. I'm Alora. I'm Shahak. I'm Shreya. I'm Pranav. Yeah, and we're from the Biotechnology Group. And as you said earlier, we are representing the Amadi Lab. I'll start off with our abstract. So PLD1 is a gene in the genome of the cell that codes for an enzyme that breaks down phosphatidylcholine into phosphatidic acid and choline. The phosphatidic acid then leaves the cell and it reattaches itself to mTOR, which is a receptor in the cell wall. And that causes a signal to be sent into the cell. So that signal goes through a process called serotransduction and specifically a phosphorylation cascade. And so what happens is that in the phosphorylation cascade, certain kinases basically transfer the signal on to another part of the cell. And then the cell starts performing mitosis once it, once it gets the signal to the centriole. So due to excess amounts, and so due to excess amounts of phosphatidic acid, um, the mTOR receptor constantly signals to the cell to start mitosis through DAG kinases. And so then PLD1 amplifies anti-apoptotic anti functions that cause inflammation and create a roadblock for chemotherapy. So the focus for our project is to create a synthetic aptamer using specialized DNA or RNA bases that act as competitive inhibitors for PLD1, uh, which allows patients to continue chemotherapy. Okay, so next I'll elaborate on the methods that we use to conduct this project. Uh, first, we used bacterial transformations in which we assembled the PLD1 gene sequence and inserted it into a plasmid, uh, specifically within the cloning site. And this plasmid was later inserted into bacteria for protein production to occur, uh, which obviously results in the bacterial transformations. Uh, we also use gel electrophoresis for both protein and DNA, which describes a method used to separate and analyze macromolecules uh, based on size or based on charge. And we placed, uh, we placed it in a matrix of agarose and applied an electric field, which resulted in the migration of molecules through pores of gel. Also, moving on to the third thing that we used were agar plates. And we used these agar plates to basically grow a large volume of E. coli containing PLD1 cheap. So the procedure went something along the lines of around 400 ml of LB broth with ampicillin, and we put it into a flask. We dipped the disposable inoculation loop in the LB agar containing E. coli with PLD1 plasmid. We then transferred the inoculation tube to LB medium, spread the bacteria, and let the let it sit in the shaker incubator overnight. The next uh, step that we did was once we grew the cells in those agar plates, we took some of those cells and extracted the DNA and protein from it. So we used some of the kits that ACRP provided. And what happens was um, protein extractions were done through mechanical and chemical lysis and the enzyme was extracted basically. And then after that, um, we PCR'd some of the DNA that we got through the DNA extraction kit. And what happened was that the DNA was built and, well, we did two things. So the D some DNA was built and shipped into lab, and then it was replicated and amplified through PCR. And then what PCR essentially does is it denatures the DNA and splits it into two different strands. And then basically it uses a template strand to create the second DNA strand. And it does that a bunch of times over and over again. And basically this allows it it makes it easier to study and analyze the sequence to ensure it's correct. And then uh, one more, one, one other thing that we did was the nanodrop. So essentially all that does is like tell us the concentration of cells in our sample and we calibrate it and we basically just use the machine in ACRP. And basically what we measured was how much PLD1 actually infused in the E. coli cells. Okay, yeah. So now I'm gonna be talking a little bit about um, the significance of our project. Um, so many patients redirect treatment to immunotherapy, which is um, more expensive than chemotherapy. So the proliferation of PLD1 and its um, resultant enzyme causes basically the breakdown of phosph phosphophatidylcholine. It's a phosphatidic acid. And then this then results in the signaling of cells which perform mitosis. And this oftentimes is unnecessary and unhealthy. So as a result, PLD1 um, significantly um, impacts the body and the 
detrimental way, which potentially could induce cancer as a result of continued and repeated mitosis. Um, so by using a competitive inhibitor for PLD1, um, the excessive production of phosphatidic acid can be prevented and basically stop the negative effects at the root of the cause. Um, so the average cost per patient for immunotherapy treatment is around $100,000 which is um, significantly more expensive than chemotherapy, which typically ranges from $10,000 to $200,000. Um, furthermore, patients undergoing in immunotherapy face the risk of treatment coverage being denied by um, their health insurance. So both chemotherapy and immunotherapy are often um, invasive and aggressive in order to effectively combat the nature of um, aggressive illnesses like cancer. All right, so now to discuss what aptamers are, really. So aptamers are single-stranded oligonucleotides that bind to targets such as, such as proteins. And so they're often truncated for therapeutic purposes to reduce synthesis costs. So uh, these have also increased nuclease resistance and have reduced renal fil filtration. Aptamers are also chemically synthesized to be scalable. These factors reduce protein production costs and result in relatively shorter production uh, timeframes compared to market inhibitors. For example, antibody treatments and small molecular inhibitors. For example, a popular PLD1 inhibitor, FIPI, is an antibody treatment which costs $284 for 10 milligrams. Our goal is to do the same thing, inhibit PLD1 with a much more cost efficient and scalable model. Now moving on to the PLD1's role in cancer. PLD1 is heavily involved in signal transduction pathway. The enzyme breaks down phosphatidylcholine into phosphatidic acid and choline, like Drew previously mentioned. The phosphatidic acid then binds to the active site of mTOR, which starts a phosphorylation cascade. Different kinases use ATP to amplify the signal that mTOR started, and once the signal reaches the centriole, mitosis begins. Oh. PLD1 is transiently stimulated upon activation because of a G protein coupled receptor at the cell surface. Uh, these GPCRs are involved in mitotic stimulations and they stimulate mitosis by allowing cells to enter interphase. And then interphase consists of G1 and S phase, which are responsible for cancer cell proliferation because it's during this time where DNA is getting replicated. Then the cell that initially had the overexpression of PLD1 due to a carc carcinogenic mutation will continuously conduct mitosis as the phosphatidic acid will trigger mTOR repeatedly. So basically by inhibiting phosphatidic acid production, it's been linked to suppress uh, tumorigenesis and malignant invasion. And therefore by inhibiting PLD1, the process starts at its root, uh, halts at its root. All right, so moving on to our objectives. Uh, protein electrophoresis is used in this project as a method to find myeloma in blood cells. And so essentially, this helps to see whether the blood cell is affected by cancer. The project also aims to use mass spectro spectroscopy. And so mass spec will be used to check the protein size and quantitate proteins by shape and weight. Cell Cellex is also uh, a process we're going to using where live cells are able to select and apply specific optimers. And so our projects will be heavily influenced by the mentioned technology. All right, can you guys finish up in about two minutes? Does that work? Yeah, we're basically done. Um, so we'd just like to thank uh, Mr. Ahmadi and ACRP for providing us with the resources and materials for allowing us to conduct our research. And thank you for listening to our presentation. Nice. Any questions for our group? Good job, y'all. Even with the technical difficulties, that's just that's just life these days. Can't get around that. So no problem. Does your advisor have any questions? I know he's in the house. <laughs> Great job, everyone. So can you talk about a little bit of the next steps uh, for your project? Um, where you see yourself, uh, what you see yourself, your group accomplishing uh, over the next semester. 
Okay, uh, during the next semester, we want to focus on bacterial transformations and protein modeling so that we can start figuring out the structure of our aptamer and start getting to understand our protein um, and our synthetic aptamer better.